what's up everybody welcome to my channel today i'm gonna be working on this 2008 this is a bmw 528i i believe it has a 3.0 i'm gonna be replacing the crankshaft position sensor since the transmission and the motor is acting up it takes a minute to start and i believe that's the problem so i'm gonna go ahead diagnose it i'm gonna replace that sensor and i'm gonna crank it and see if that fixes the issue I'm gonna go ahead and get started with the car. The first thing I'm gonna do before I disconnect the battery, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my basic scanner. I'm gonna try to pull out as many coils as I can. So I'm gonna go ahead and, I'm not gonna start the engine, I'm just gonna turn it on. So there it is. Okay, so it shows that I have three codes. I'm gonna go ahead and see what they are. One of the codes is asking me to check the crankshaft position sensor. This is P0335. So, so I'm going to go ahead and see if I have more codes. I got another code over here. So it's, uh, so it's too lean on bank two. This is P0174. I got P0171. P0335 again. And it's going to be the same codes all over again. So the main ones is P0335 and P0174, P0171. So I'm going to go ahead and, and start the car so I can show you how it takes a minute to start. So I'm going to go ahead and crank it. So it took a minute to start. I'm going to go ahead and replace the sensor and I'm going to see if that changes the problem. I mean, on the scanner, this is a basic scanner. So I have nothing else to do. I can go ahead and grab my other scanner and do more diagnosis. I already did that, so I'm 100% sure that it's gonna be the crankshaft position sensor. I'm gonna go ahead and replace it and then we'll see what happens. Before I even open the hood, I'm gonna go ahead and open my trunk and I'm gonna disconnect the battery. So behind this panel right here is the battery. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. So I'm just going to put these to the side and I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the negative side of the battery. Now that my battery is disconnected, I'm going to go ahead and open the hood. So I'm going to be removing the intake because the sensor is underneath the intake somewhere by the starter. I'm going to be removing this cover right here and this one's already loose, they didn't put the bolts on. I'm also going to be removing the intake housing. I'm going to be removing the air ducts that go to the throttle body. And I'm going to be removing this intake right here. I don't think I have to remove the injectors. So I'm going to leave those alone. And I'm going to start off with the intake housing. Okay, so I'm going to undo these clips right here. And there's a clamp right here. So I'm going to remove this clamp. And I'm going to disconnect the sensor. Then I'm just going to be taking this off. I got the upper air filter housing off. Now I'm going to remove the bottom section. I only have two torques, one right here and one right here. I'm going to go ahead and take those off and I'm going to remove the complete unit. That way I have more room to work on the sensor. I got the other piece off. Now I'm going to be careful and I'm going to remove this hose. I believe this is like the EVAP hose. So all you got to do is just squeeze it together. You just got to be careful not to break it because these break easily. They're plastic and I'm just going to put it to the side. So I'm just going to push it to the side. Um, I shouldn't have a problem if I leave it here. The next step, I'm gonna be removing this piece. So it's not a big deal. This one has a clamp back here. So all you gotta do is undo the clamp and this whole piece should come off. I'm gonna go ahead and take it off and I'll come back with you guys. Here's the other piece. I'm gonna put that on the side. And now I have more room to work on the intake. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move these wires to the side. So I'm just gonna pull them out. And I'm going to move them to the side right now, but before I do, I'm going to disconnect the map sensor. So I have my, my map sensor right here. So this is the map sensor. I'm going to disconnect it. And then I have another, I don't know if it's a wire. Yeah, it's a, a battery wire. I'm just going to move it to the side. So this goes way on the back. So I'm just going to move all of that to the side. And um, these two right here, this one and this one. You should be able to take them off as well. So they have like a little clip right here and you just uh, slide them down. There you go. 
I'm gonna move them to the side. Now the throttle body, I am gonna go ahead and disconnect it. Um, if you don't turn the car on, if you don't clean it, you shouldn't have a problem. I'm not gonna turn it on with the throttle body disconnected. I'm gonna disconnect it right now and I'm gonna remove the four bolts. So I'm gonna completely take it off. So here's my throttle body and it looks like it has a bunch of oil. So I'm assuming there's gonna be a problem with the PCB on the, on the valve cover. I'm gonna go ahead and replace this valve cover, but I'm gonna do a separate video on how to do it. For now, I'm just gonna focus on replacing that crankshaft position sensor. So I removed the throttle body and it looks like I have a bracket down here. So here's a bracket that it's holding down this plastic and this plastic is um, holding all the connectors together. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this plastic cover. I mean, all you have to do is uh, slide it out and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna unbolt the bracket. Uh, maybe you don't have to, but I'm gonna do it just in case, in case it's holding something else. I don't wanna deal with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that bracket. The other thing is you have vacuum hoses connected to the intake. So I got one right here and there's another one somewhere in there. I think it's the same hose, but I mean, it's just running to different locations on the intake. So I'm gonna try to disconnect as much as I can. And lastly, I'm gonna remove the bolts that go on top of the intake and I'm gonna have to remove the intake. I also noticed that the hose, I think it's like the PCB hose that goes underneath the intake. The one that goes to the back of the valve cover, it's damaged. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that off and if I have to replace it, I'm gonna buy a new one and I'm gonna replace it. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that bracket for now. Okay, so I got the bracket off. So here's the, um, the bracket. You're able to see it right here, it's loose. And I also disconnected this uh, seems to be like an AVAP hose. It goes to the AVAP valve underneath. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to remove the intake now. Now, the other thing I have to disconnect is the fuel line. So there's a bracket right here. I have to remove this bolt so it's not attached to the intake. I don't know if I'm gonna disconnect the fuel line yet. If I have to, I will, but if I don't have to, I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this bracket and I'm gonna start undoing the bolts on the intake. And hopefully I don't have to disconnect the fuel line, but if I have to, I will. All right, so I ended up disconnecting the fuel line. There wasn't enough play to move it to the side, so I had to disconnect it. And you also have to remove the O2 sensors. So I just disconnected both oxygen sensors. And once I remove the intake, I'm just gonna run the wires through here. So I'm gonna go ahead and completely remove the intake now. So I got the intake off. And the intake, it's melted like right here. So I'm gonna completely take this off right now and I'm gonna inspect it because I'm getting a code for a lean condition and I might have a hole right here. It probably melted. So I might replace the intake and I'm also gonna replace this PCB hose right here. So this hose goes to the back and on the back of the valve cover is damaged. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna completely take this off right now. And most likely I'm gonna replace the intake and I'm gonna replace this PCB hose. Okay, so I just finished removing the intake and here's my PCB hose. And um, as you can see, it's damaged. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to find another hose. And I got my intake over here. So when I remove the intake, it has a bunch of oil inside. There's like maybe a quart or two quarts of oil. And it's also damaged over here, it's like melted. So I'm gonna get another intake and I'm gonna get that PCB hose. I'm gonna go ahead and replace the crank sensor, the intake and that hose. I already took it apart, so might as well. I want this car to be running good. It still has low miles, so I think it's worth it. I'm gonna clean all of that oil that it's sitting on the block. It looks like they replaced the, the starter, so they took it apart in the past and they didn't fix it properly. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those parts. Later on, I'm gonna clean the block and I'm gonna replace the sensor. And um, the sensor goes right here. So this is the connector for the sensor and it only has one bolt. I think it has like a, like a Torx. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace it in a minute, but before I do, I wanna clean the block because it's kind of dirty and honestly, I'm already here, I wanna clean it up a little bit. All right, so I cleaned the block a little bit, not a lot because, I mean, I just used brake clean. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the sensor now. The sensor is sitting back here, so there it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the bolt and I'm gonna disconnect it after I take it off. Okay, so here's the sensor and the best way to take it out is just twist it and then once you twist it, you could just pull it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect it and I'm gonna throw the new one in. I'm gonna bolt it on and then I'm just gonna plug it back on. And um, I got my new one over here. So I paid about $60 for this one. 
And um, one thing, don't buy it from eBay because sometimes eBay doesn't have the greatest quality. Unless it's a branded sensor, then go ahead and get it from eBay. But you're going to realize if it's a good sensor or not just by the price. So make sure, I mean, these ones, they're from $60 to $90. I remember the other one was like $90. So I'm going to go ahead and install the sensor. Then I got to go get myself another intake and a replacement for the PCB hose. And I'm just going to throw everything back on. Here's my new sensor. I put grease so the installation is a lot easier and I don't damage the o-ring so I'm using this kind of grease I mean you, you don't have to apply that much I always exaggerate on grease but um this will make the installation a lot easier and you're not gonna damage the o-ring so I'm gonna go ahead and install it then I'm gonna put everything else back together I just finished installing my sensor and even though it's a common problem on these cars I'm still gonna check my connector so I'm gonna make sure it's in good condition and the nothing is broken or missing so now that um, I checked it I'm gonna go ahead and connect it now that I installed my sensor I was gonna go to the junkyard to get another intake because I don't want to use the one I have it's kind of melted but I went online actually I went to offer up and I found somebody it was actually a neighbor he was selling an intake so I was able to get it for like $30 so this is gonna be the replacement intake it even has this hose right here that I was gonna replace let me show you guys so it's this piece right here with a valve the one I have it's uh, I don't want to say it's broken but um, in a way it is broken and they just added this piece so I'm gonna replace the whole thing I'm gonna take this off I'm gonna be using the one on this intake another thing I didn't get many of the sensors like the map sensor and then there's another one that goes right here so this one right here so it's some kind of um, temperature sensor so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna swap the brackets the sensors everything that um, I don't have on this intake I'm just gonna use from this one and another thing that I'm gonna be replacing so this hose right here it's, it's damaged it's actually broken so I'm not gonna use that one I picked up another one for like $50 so I'm gonna be putting a new hose and uh, that should be it so I'm gonna go ahead and swap whatever I have to swap from this intake to this one I'm gonna go ahead and install the intake and uh, I should be done after I finish the car I'm not gonna start it because I know I have a problem on this PCV valve from this uh, cover so I'm gonna go ahead and replace this cover but I'm gonna do that on another video and once I finish replacing the cover I'm gonna turn the car on and I'm gonna see if everything works properly okay so I pretty much have my intake ready I already put all the sensors and all the brackets this is the old one so I'm gonna go ahead and install this one I'm almost done over here I already bolted my intake don't forget to connect this um, oil pressure switch I disconnected this one so I can have more access but if you disconnect it don't forget to connect it back on I already connected my O2 sensors my fuel pressure line I already put the bracket back there I'm not gonna connect my PCV hose until I replace the valve cover because there's a problem with this one it's letting a lot of oil through and it's going inside the intake so I'm not going to connect that until I replace this and back here all you got to do is this power cable there's a bracket back here so just put it on the bracket connect your map sensor and then you have the sensor that goes on the back where the PCB hose is these two right here you got to put them back on you got to do the bracket and I mean I got a couple of other things to do I also have to connect my EVAP solenoid so the evap solenoid it's somewhere down here so here's the um here's the evap solenoid i also have to install my throttle body i'm gonna do that in a minute so i'm gonna go ahead and take care of everything and then i'll show you guys once it's done so there's my throttle body right here everything else is connected this hose right here the one over here this one right here and uh, i mean everything is where it's supposed to be so i'm gonna go ahead and finish this i'm gonna put the intake housing and um, that's gonna be it um this is for my master floor right here so i'm gonna connect this last once i finish it i'm not gonna turn it on right away because like i said before i gotta replace this i don't want all the oil to go inside of my intake then i'm gonna come back and i'm gonna turn it on and we're gonna drive the car and make sure everything is good all the codes went away and if i have any other codes i'm gonna fix them and i'm gonna try to take care of all the problems i want the car running good i need it to pass smog so I'm going to take care of everything I have to on this car. Okay, so that's it. I'm pretty much done. So all I got to do now, I'm going to replace this valve cover. I'm going to replace the whole thing. I'm going to replace the gasket. 
and I did not connect my PCB hose on the back. So I'm not gonna connect it till I replace this because there's a problem with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and take care of this real quick and I'll come back with you guys. Now that I put the valve cover on, I already connected the PCB hose that goes on the back. So it's this one right here and it's already connected. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put my cover back on. I just gotta clean it and I'm gonna go inside of the car. I'm gonna turn it on and I'm gonna make sure that the coats went away. Of course, I have to erase them myself. I'm gonna go ahead and connect the battery. I'm also gonna reset the coats and I'm gonna drive the car, make sure they don't come back on. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the car. Last time it took a minute to start. Let's see if now that I replace the sensor, it starts a little faster. So I'm gonna go ahead and crank it. Yep, definitely started a lot faster. And I have no check engine. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna check for any codes. So there's zero codes right now. There's no codes. All right, so there's no codes. So I'm gonna go ahead and drive it. I'm gonna make sure it goes through all the gears because before I put the sensor, it got stuck on like third gear. So it wouldn't shift up or down. It just stayed on, on third. And um, and I was getting a code that there was a problem with the transmission. So I'm gonna go ahead, close the hood and I'm gonna drive it in a minute. I'm not gonna drive it much. All I wanna know is if it goes through the gears and I also don't wanna see the check engine anymore. So I'm just gonna drive it all the way to the end of the building and back and I'm gonna make sure that it goes through the gears and I don't get a check engine. So I'm just gonna check the RPMs. All right, so that's second gear. And then that was third gear. I mean, you can check on the RPMs over here. So it went, so it went from first, second, and third. You can see the RPMs. See that second gear, and that's third gear. All right, so I'm gonna drive it back, and there's no check engine anymore, so that's good. That's gonna be it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys have any questions, let me know. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.